my name is Dominic and this is Software Without Code. We'll be making our own audiobooks today. You can do this without writing any code or having any technical knowledge. But the first things first, let's select a source text. Uh, I've been learning Polish recently, so I've actually selected a Polish ebook uh, from Project Gutenberg. If you're not familiar with Project Gutenberg, it's a website that has open domain books, so they're free for distribution. You can use them however you want, as far as I as far as I know and uh, it's just a great website with books in multiple different languages. So uh, the book I selected is called uh, Bez Przewodnika, which uh, please correct me if you if you speak Polish, feel free, uh, feel free to correct me in the comments. But it, I think it translates to something roughly like without guide. Uh, I don't know what it's about as I've never read it, but it's 6,200 words long, tens of thousands of characters. Um, so it'll be a, a fun experiment to turn into an audiobook. And if you are following along, you can use a much longer text. I, I chose that one arbitrarily. Uh, but now there are costs associated with this. And so let's take a closer look at what they are. So you'll notice that I have an Amazon Web Services uh, web page open. We're using uh, two services from Amazon Web Services. One is called Amazon Poly. And the other one uh, I'll get into in a second is called Amazon S AWS S3. So Amazon Poly. Uh, has actually a free tier, as you can see here, up to 5 million characters. Uh, chances are, well, I, I know I won't go over that. Chances are you won't either, but uh, just, you know, understand how many characters you are synthesizing to speech. So, but just look at what the cost is. We'll, we'll pretend there is no free tier. So 1 million characters looks like costs $4. Uh, that is very cheap because uh, the book I have, I think it's 30 to 40,000 characters in that range. And it's, it's going to cost pennies. Um, so just, you know, do the math, figure out what you're going to pay. It's going to be a relatively small amount, though, and likely, actually, in most cases, free. Great. So Amazon Poly is this uh, Amazon Poly, the service that converts the text to speech. Now that we have the pricing for that out of the way, let's take a look at the other service we're using, which will be called Amazon S3. Now, S3 is a storage service in Amazon, and the S3 part, uh, if I remember correctly, stands for something like um, Simple Storage Service. Uh, I don't remember exactly. Now, Amazon S3 is a, uh, it'll be used towards the end of this video. It's, it's where we will be saving the synthesized um, the synthesized text. So in other words, we'll be saving the audio file to S3. It, 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 Amazon forces us to do that. We don't have the option to directly download it, which which is fine. Uh, we will actually briefly see at the beginning because we have to set up the what's known as storage bucket. So in other words, the place that the audio file will go. So we'll, we'll take a look at it. But anyways, the, the pricing for S3 similarly is extremely cheap. Um, when you consider our use case. So it does vary by region, and so I recommend whatever region you're using, uh, just pick it here. I am from Canada, but I'm just gonna choose the US, US East Virginia region just for, for the example here. Uh, so you'll notice pricing is like 2.3 cents per gigabyte. I don't know how big the audio resulting audio file will be. I imagine it will be fairly fairly large, but I, I'm I, I'm just going to assume it's it's going to be less than a gigabyte. And so you know, 2.3 cents, it's pretty cheap. Now there is a free tier. Um, yeah, so there's a free tier also, which is five gigabytes of, of storage and 20,000 requests, 20,000 put requests. These AWS free tiers. I'm not sure because they have two different types, but one is for, for new regist uh, newly registered accounts and the other is uh, just ongoing free tier. So I'm not a newly registered account. I likely won't, won't take advantage of this, but for, you know, 2.3 cents, I don't, I don't really care. It's not that, it's, it's not a significant cost. Um, now, this isn't the only way they bill for S3. I th this, this will be uh, the main cost for, for this particular use case of synthesizing text-to-speech because we're just storing it temporarily, we'll download it, and then delete it. But the actual uh, data transfer costs money as well. So now I, I, I went to the data transfer pricing section. And so, of course, data data is free to go into S3. Uh, but when you download S3, uh, the first gigabyte's free, the next, you know, 10 terabytes is, is 9 cents per gigabyte. 
So I, I expect this to cost nothing. Uh, but it's still worth noting that if you have a several gigabyte file, you will probably pay a few pennies just to download. And, and um, we will be deleting the file from S3 after we're done. So uh, note that this storage cost is is a monthly cost. But if you know if you follow this tutorial, you won't have to worry about that. Okay. So now that we've we've gotten past the pricing, we're going to go back to the main. Amazon Web Services page, that's aws.amazon.com, and oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Let's sign into the console. So I'm going to skip ahead to where I'm signed in. All right, welcome back. So we just signed into Amazon Web Services. Uh, if you are watching this video, there's a good chance you're making this your account for the first time. Uh, I'm not going to show the sign up process, but if you, if anyone's struggling with it, leave a comment below and I'll make a video to, to help with that. So the first screen you are likely to see is this list of AWS services. Uh, there might be additional setup again when you're signing up an account, I don't recall, but again, leave a comment, I'll be happy to help. So if you don't see the screen, if you click this AWS symbol at the top left, it takes you to the, the home console. So now I know this looks incredibly confusing. I mean, look at all these, look at all these services that Amazon offers. Uh, but again, I want to emphasize we're only using two and we can safely ignore every other service. Worth noting are two other things. The first is uh, my name, Dominic. If you click on it and yours will be your name. Uh, there's a billing dashboard, so you will be able to track your costs very easily with what you what you spent. I think for 99% of people out there watching this video, it will be completely free. But for those few other people that maybe have an existing AWS account or in another country that maybe the free tiers don't apply to, it, it like I said, it'll cost you a few a few cents. Um, and the other thing worth noting is these are the regions. So you, so a region is essentially where the servers are located. Um, usually I use the Canada region because I'm from Canada, but we're just going to leave it in U.S. East, North Virginia for the sake of this video. And we're going to, now we're going to find the service we need. So the first thing we're going to find is actually S3 to create that, that bucket that I mentioned earlier. So if I type S3, scalable storage in the cloud, it'll open my Amazon S3 page. I have as you can see, 13 buckets. I have uh, blurred out the the bucket names here. Uh, it's not per, a real issue. Some of my buckets are public, so I don't necessarily want those getting out. But also, a good thing to know is that every bucket name is unique, unique across all service. So in other words, if I have a bucket called uh, My Awesome Bucket, no one else can have a bucket called My Awesome Bucket. So with that in mind, let's create a bucket. And we'll create one with... Um, uh, we'll, we'll create our, our, our bucket name, we'll just call um, um, SWC uh, Audio Mix. Boom. US East North Virginia. We'll hit next. So you don't need to worry about this, you don't, or you don't need to worry about versioning, server access log, tags. I know again it's, it's confusing, but you really don't need to worry about any of this option level logging, default encryption. I mean, I'll, we're not going to worry about this either, but let's talk about it briefly. If you want to have all the objects encrypted while they're stored in your S3, you can select this option. Uh, it's for what we're doing, you know, using open domain audiobook, or sorry, creating an a audiobook from an open domain text. It really doesn't matter. Uh, CloudWatch, again, don't worry about this. So hit next. Now, um, this is... Uh, the permissions. Now, do not grant public read access. Make sure that that this is the, the drop down that is selected. Do not grant public read access to this bucket. There's no need for it. Uh, there are some uses for AWS that public read makes sense, but overall, if you're if you're new to this, uh, stay on the safe side. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, you'll make make sure that now for your account, you'll see your user ID over this box, uh, where this box is. Uh, you will select read, write, and of course the, for the object permissions, read, write as well. Give yourself full permissions. Hit next, 
and this will summarize everything we did. Don't worry about it. Hit create bucket. Okay, perfect. We're done. So this is the bucket here. Uh, if I click on it, it's empty. Uh, you could upload stuff to it. I don't recommend that. Uh, it's, it's not like Google Drive where you can just willy-nilly upload things because you're, you're paying every time you download something or for the amount of gigabytes you store. It could be a more cost-effective solution in the long run than, as uh, opposed to Google Drive, but it depends on your use case and you'd have to do the math yourself. So now that we've uh, configured our S3, let's go to services and now we're going to go to Amazon Polly again. We're only using two services so you can ignore the complex com complex piece that is AWS. So let's go to Amazon Polly. And I think this is really cool. So you can you can actually test it out here um, and this as far as I can tell this is completely free to do so, to do um, or at least it would be included in the free tier but you can hit listen to speech and I'm going to do that right now. Hi, my name is Joanna. I will read any text you type here. Awesome. And now the other thing that's really cool is this SSML. So you might be wondering what SSML is. Uh, I recommend uh, clicking on this question mark right next to it. It'll open a new tab. So SSML is, is a markup language that, uh, your speech synthesis markup language that allows you to kind of customize the output speech. So one interesting conversation I had with um, uh, actually an Amazon author is, uh, I mentioned, I was talking about the service with him and he said that he could never use a service like this because his, uh, he, he hires people to, when they create the audiobooks for him, to, to enunciate voices, put on accents, etc. And I, I totally understand. However, you can actually do a lot of that with this service. And if you're maybe a smaller time author, it might be worth looking at. Um, let me know in the comments below if you end up using this to synthesize your own uh, ebooks. Or if you're if you're interested in doing so, I, I'd be, I'm I'm really curious to hear your opinion on it. So, uh, this this is a complicated document, but I just just want to show you it for 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 simplicity. What you the the link that's more important by far is under topics here, uh, uh, and I just to be clear, I just closed that tab, went back to the. If you click on this question mark link, it'll open this tab and. This SSML tag supported by Amazon Polly. That's that's what you really need to know. And so these are the, the tags. Now you can you can pause the video if you need to use this as a reference, or you know just you can go to this link and have it open in a tab. Whatever whatever you need to do. Uh, I'm going to show you the whispering one, and the other ones work very very uh, similarly to the whisper one. So I, I, I just uh, I'll just do that one. Now, if you scroll down, this is typical of most documentation, is that they actually have examples on how to use them. So for example, this shows like break time tag, uh, emphasis tag, and, and in the video I'll show you the whisper tag. So, so if you're curious how to use one of these, uh, you can just like control F, uh, type in like whisper, and you know, you'll find the, the whispering example as I just did here. Uh, just keep that in mind. It, it, they, it, it, it might look intimidating, but I assure you, with the proper t with with the proper mindset, it's 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 um, it's more convenient than confusing. So we're gonna go back to Amazon Polly, and I plain text is you just type text and hit listen to speech. You'll talk in normal voice, but uh, we're we're in the SSML tag, uh, or is the SSML tab? Sorry. And we are going to do the whisper. So actually, I'm going to refer to the whispering example. So whispering. I'm going to copy this, go back to Amazon Polly. And this is exactly how, how I would do it um, myself, as I would refer to the documentation. And for the most part, uh, I, I think that's what most normal humans do. Uh, so don't don't worry about it. Uh, and again, no technical experience required. We're not writing any any code. This is a, a markup language, which 
as you can see, it, it has a similar syntax where you have an opening tag and then a closing tag, and the difference is the closing tag has a, a little um, uh, forward slash. So what I pasted in here was this Amazon effect tag, uh, and the name is whispered, and then here's the closing tag. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, some text. So you can imagine you're reading a book, and the in you know in the book it's it's someone says something and um, not me today whisper Paul uh, so so we're gonna kind of mimic that effect and I'm just gonna copy this Kendra to where Japan is because we're gonna use Kendra voice just to show that you can change this if you look there are a ton of different voices here uh, the, this is US English um, and now let's let's play this and and see what it sounds like oh yep so I'm glad this happened because uh, chances are you'll run into the same same uh, problems. Okay, so I fixed the issue. Uh, I did it off camera, saved time, and this is likely something you will run into as well if you're copying and pasting from the documentation, because uh, this is not obvious. But uh, I actually had to replace these quotation marks, like backspace them, add new double quotation marks. Uh, I, I, I'm guessing that the quotation mark that I that, that is is here. You can see um, it's probably a different Unicode character. Uh, Unicode being the set of characters that you can type into your uh, on your screen. And I I suspect that Amazon made a mistake there uh, in not enabling this easily copy paste so so just be aware if you copy and paste you'll likely run into the same issue with these quotation marks so now i'm going to play this for you and um yeah let's enjoy hi my name is kendra i will read any text you type here whispered kendra yep so that is awesome uh, now we could download the mp3 or synthesize s3 but like i said i chose that polish text just to show you that um, you know, you can use this as an excellent language learning tool, or, I mean, if you can synthesize Polish text, you can certainly synthesize any sort of text, and I will actually list this here. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, pretty awesome. So I have switched out to the Polish language. I'm going to go back to this plain text, and I'm going to paste the whole text. So actually there were 40,713 characters, um, and you can't just listen to the speech or download the MP3 because... It, as you can see here, uh, for up to 100,000 characters, your task must be saved to an S3 bucket with up to 3,000 characters, you can listen to it immediately. So actually, it looks like there is an upper limit of 100,000 characters. I think the simple solution to that is if you break your book apart into 100,000 character chunks, you can, you can synthesize them into multiple files. Anyways, um, let's go and synthesize test 3 so we hit the synthesize test 3 uh, so the output bucket remember we created a bucket it was SWC audiobooks now the key you'll see this is optional and the SNS topic for notifications are optional first off we're not even going to worry about this this is completely unrelated to what we're doing this SNS topic for notification the key prefix um, uh, you can think of the key like essentially a folder inside your bucket. So your bucket is really just a folder, so it's, it's, it's essentially a subfolder if you want to keep things organized. We're not going to worry about this because we don't need to, we're just doing one book. Although if this was something you did regularly, like maybe, you, um, uh, maybe you're a law student and you are creating audiobooks of your legal texts, you might want to organize them a little more logically, but let's not worry about it. So we'll hit synthesize, and you can see that the task is scheduled. Uh, it doesn't happen immediately. Uh, it will take some time. So great. Now we can go here to S3 synthesize tasks. And it is uh, working right now. I will uh, I will uh, leave you or I'll cut ahead to when this this is done and we can take a look at the end result. Hello. Uh, so the task is done. I just hit refresh. Uh, and well, here I'll do it right now. Anyways, I hit refresh and saw the status change from scheduled to completed. It took 
I actually walked away to get a glass of water, but uh, it took less than a few minutes. It probably took, I'm guessing, less than a minute. Uh, maybe it might, it might be worth timing it in the future, but uh, yeah. So I'll show you now how to actually get your audiobook. And because, uh, uh, you know, this task is completed, but it's kind of we're in a vacuum right now. Just, I mean, obviously there's this URL. But if you go to this URL, um, now I haven't done this yet, but I'm assuming if you go to this URL, it'll say access denied. Yeah. So it says access denied, which is good because we didn't allow uh, our bucket to be public. Remember when I suggested not to do that? So I'll show you how to access it from within Amazon Web Services. So the first thing is I hit services, and this is going to be the same thing we did before. I'm just going to type S3, scalable storage in the cloud, S3. I'm going to click on that. And then you see all my buckets, and right at the bottom, well, I mean, you won't see my buckets, but uh, they're underneath that rectangle. And uh, you see SWC audiobooks right at the bottom. Let's click on it. And boom, we have an MP3 file now. It's 17.4 uh, megabytes, so that's interesting. Uh, I, I actually had no, uh, I mean, I did a few test ones, of course. I just didn't know how long that would be. So let's download it. And I'm only going to play, like, it's in another language. And I, as, I, as I would assume, most of my audience is English speaking, uh, native English speakers like myself. So uh, we're only just going to play the first little bit just to verify that, you know, it's what we expected. So let's hit uh, save. Of course, uh, it does the security scan. Now let's open it. Wierzysz, że nam się nie śni? Szczupły i blady chłopiec w szkolnej bluzce podniósł na brata zdziwione spojrzenie wiel. Yeah, I would say that's that's what I expected. And I mean, hey, this is an awesome tool. I'm going to be using this myself because one of the challenges I found is uh, finding. Uh, other language content like Polish content in in Canada, it's it's fairly expensive, and it's it's not easy to find either. You have to to really search the internet. So, uh, but of course that's one use case. Like I said, another use case you could put your notes in um, audiobook form. It, it literally took seconds and cost well, it was free, but in theory cost pennies, so or fractions of pennies, fractions of a penny. <laughs> The final step in this process is to delete uh, the, the file as well as the, the bucket. Now, buckets don't cost anything. You can have any number of them as far as I know. Uh, in other words, I don't think there's an upper limit to how many buckets you can have, and they won't cost you anything. Uh, but the files inside them, potentially depending on your usage of the free tier, uh, like whether it applies to you or how much of it you used, I mean, this could cost you fractions of a penny per month. So let's, let's delete it. Uh, make sure you download it before you delete it. The last thing you want to do is <laughs> the last thing you want to do is uh, have an issue where you forgot to download it and you deleted it and have to go through that process again. So I just hit uh, selected it. I hit actions, delete. Don't worry, we'll go through that process again in a sec. Actually, we'll go through that right now. Uh, let's say it's unchecked. I select the file. I hit actions. I hit delete, and you can see it shows you the file you're about to delete. The you know, the audience affected, uh, and I just hit delete, which is like a confirmation. And then you should see the screen. The bucket is now empty. Great. So now we're done. Te technically, we could stop here um, because uh, we won't incur any charges, but I'll show you how to delete the bucket as well. So I'm going to hit this Amazon S3 in the left corner there. Hit, uh, I'll click on uh, my, my bucket, but I won't click the text. I'm going to click the uh, see how it highlights the text. I don't uh, highlight the text to click on it. Click on the side here and then we'll hit delete bucket up here. And I mean this is serious business so they make you type in the name. I'm kind of joking about serious business obviously because it's an empty bucket. Uh, so we type in the name to confirm deletion and I hit confirm. Boom. There is now no more bucket. We're done. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to subscribe. Hit me a thumbs up if you like this video, and let me know what you want to see next time. Uh, we can expand on this topic. We can go into any other topic. I am open to any challenge uh, with respect to building software without code. So if you can think of an idea, I will find a way to make it. Um, have a good day.